Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another video in this one my friends I'm gonna be testing a GeForce GTX 1660 Super in 2023. Now this one is an OEM version of the card made by HP, it comes with their pre-built PCs and you can't really buy it separately unless you buy it used of course like I did for 80 euros. That's quite a decent deal for a 1660 Super and I really wasn't expecting to pull that off but the seller actually accepted my HP euro offer. Now the cooler itself is quite tiny and I really like it. And that's not what she said, obviously. <laughs> You got that 8-pin power connector on the side, which is very interesting and pretty well positioned in my opinion. I like to see that. But let's go over the specs of the card right now. So the 1660 Super is based on the Turing architecture, that's the same architecture as the RTX 20 series, but of course this is not an RTX GPU, so it doesn't support DLSS or hardware ray tracing. It has 1408 CUDA cores, 88 TMUs, 48 ROPs, 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running on a 192 bit memory buzz and it consumes 125 watts of power. That's why you need that 8 pin power connector. It also released 4 years ago in 2019 for 229 US dollars. And this was quite a weird product for Nvidia to release because they already had the GTX 1660 as well as GTX 1660 Ti and this one was only like 5% slower than the 1660 Ti, so yeah, kind of weird, right? <laughs> anyway, let's put it to the test in 2023, shall we? Okay, let's start with Spider-Man Remastered. We're playing this one at 1080p using TAA and the high settings preset. Here we go, guys. This game is pretty well optimized, although it stutters a tiny bit. You can see that that frame time is not completely smooth. VRAM might become an issue in just a little bit as we start loading in more textures and objects around the map. Uh, but so far, so good. It's pretty playable in my opinion. If you lock the FPS to 60, those frame times will smooth out by a lot. It's still gonna have the odd stutter here and there, but not a huge issue, honestly. Even if you don't lock your FPS, it is still gonna be a really playable experience. It's just that with an FPS lock, it will become much smoother. Also, Nvidia Reflex is enabled. That's why GPU usage sometimes fluctuates a little bit. I'm gonna go to the Central Park area, which is usually pretty GPU intensive because you got a lot of vegetation there. Ooh, that was a massive stutter right there. I think it started swapping some things that should be on VRAM into the RAM at this point because the RAM usage went up there. Uh, when the stutter happened and we're finally in the Central Park area touching 60 FPS minimum so far. Okay, 59, 58, 57. Yep, this is definitely a little bit more GPU bound than the city over there. I mean, it's still okay for a single player title especially. I don't mind a couple of drops into the high 50s or mid 50s at times. Unfortunately, we don't have DLSS support with this GPU, so we can't really use that. FSR 2.1 looks a bit rough in the edges in this one, so I would not utilize it. But let me try out some XCSS on ultra quality. Yeah, in this game, the upscalers don't really look that great, honestly. You probably can't really see it that well in the video because YouTube compression usually ruins everything in this part of this game but yeah it is definitely way softer so I just keep it at native res and live with a few drops here and there it's not the end of the world pretty playable. Next up is Cyberbob 2077 at 1080p using the medium settings preset and medium textures as well. Actually, we can do high textures here, so I'm gonna set it to that. Disable FSR at first and the motion blur, and that's about it. And here in Cyberbug or Cyberbob or Cyberpunk, whatever you want to call it, I got plenty of names for this one. It gets between 50 and 60 frames per second most of the time, but it will drop in more intense scenarios unfortunately there we go 48 49 there for a second 47 even oh no i missed bob there god damn it we need to kill that best wait a second i just ruined the car already there we go over here bob there we go uh oh so uh we're, we're gonna do this like oh never mind <laughs> okay back into a car let's do this roundabout right here getting lower 50s this is usually really intensive but it's not having a major problem here i think with fsr we could 
have those like 60 plus on average at least. Also, the 6 gigabytes of VRAM in this game are completely enough even for high settings at 1080p resolution. Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't really utilize a ton of VRAM, which is great. You can max out those textures and play on low settings if you want to. I think I would keep it on medium, honestly, because it looks a little bit better. Um, and I would definitely enable some FSR. Speaking of, it's about time we do that, right? So let's set this to quality. And on quality FSR, things are slightly more shimmery, but it doesn't really change the experience visually by too much. I think it's still very good looking, and especially on a smaller uh, 1080p monitor, like a 24-inch 1080p monitor, FSR on quality will look pretty damn good. Um, and it's getting well above 60 FPS this time around, so that performance improvement is definitely very welcomed here. Let's kill Bob once again, he's probably back there. Yep, there it is, there he is! Goodbye, Bob! Once again, everybody's running around like a prick for some reason. I just, I just did everybody a favor by killing Bob. I didn't kill that one, by the way. That's not my fault. But yeah, it's well above 60 even here now. Lastly, I really want to see it with some XCSS as well, because this looks better than FSR. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more intensive, as you can see. It's almost like playing at native resolution. Slightly better than that. We gained, like, what, 5 FPS or so, but it still drops from 60 frames, so it's not ideal. You know, I think FSR is the way to go. Unfortunately, FSR in this game still has some ghosting issues, which are terrible, and if you don't like those, well, this is probably the way to go instead of FSR. Um, but yeah, FSR is what I choose. Now let's take it easy with Valorant at 1080p resolution using the highest settings possible, aside from like big net. And we're also using four times MSAA because without it, we wouldn't be able to max out that GPU all of the time. Okay, hello. <laughs> Still, even with all of the settings cranked up to the maximum, we are achieving 300 plus frames per second. And there are a couple of settings that are extremely intensive, guys, like the improved clarity setting as well as that MSA that I told you. If you set both of those two off, uh, you will be able to get like 500 frames per second with a fast enough CPU. Basically, at those lower settings, it matters more to have a really fast CPU and not so much a super fast GPU, honestly. Um, anyway, if you want to play this game on maxed out settings, it's still gonna provide you with a competitive experience, high refresh rate one, you could run a 240 hertz monitor, for example, absolutely fine. Ooh, pentakill. What? <laughs> they just lined up perfectly. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Okay, nice. There's another one there. What the hell? It says that I died uh, 11 times, but that's complete lie. It was always from behind. I only died once. There we go. Nice. See? See? <laughs> from the front, everything is fine. They can't do it. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're on fire today. Oh, it's probably because I drank some coffee. <laughs> No way, no way, no way, no way. I just keep getting killed now. The other one has four kills left to go. Oh, these guys suck, actually. That's why I'm doing so well. <laughs> Show me the peoples. Show me the peoples. I want more kills, man. Show me four. No. What a shame. I died way too much by the end of it. But anyway, it is a really, really awesome experience. Next is Call of Duty Warzone 2 at 1080p using the minimum settings preset but with normal textures instead of very low textures. I think 6GB of VRAM should be enough for normal textures in this game. Now I am dropping in one of the most intensive areas in this entire game, which is the Zarqua Hydroelectric. Whenever you jump off this bridge and go into the water is where it drops the most and it doesn't drop from 60fps so that's great, even from 70fps honestly. Actually, shooting the water is usually slightly more intensive. Yep, <laughs> you can see that it does drop, but it's only in that specific scenario. So not a problem here. It feels smooth and feels responsive. The frame time graph is a bit terrible there, but that's just because of the micro stutters that this game suffers from. So you won't really have 
a major issue playing this game on a 1660 Super. It plays pretty well, as long as you keep things on the minimum settings at 1080p, it's gonna be fine. But at the same time, I think I expected a little bit better here in Warzone 2, since the recommended requirements ask for either a 1660 or a 1660 Super. I don't remember which one it is. This one should probably be like the minimum requirements GPU, in my opinion, for a 60 plus FPS experience all of the time. Um, and good thing is, on ultra settings, the game doesn't really look all that different. It still manages to look decent here on low, so I'd definitely play like this. With 90 FPS average, it's a nice experience. Enough pew pew games now, I'm playing Forza Horizon 5 this time at 1080p with CAA, no upscalers and the ultra settings preset. They're still extreme over ultra, I don't recommend extreme with a 6GB card by the way, it will stutter like crazy because it's gonna run out of VRAM, but on ultra settings it seems to be doing a pretty good job and it's really stable actually around 80 frames per second that's really nice to see it might still drop from 60 fps when we reach the city area of the map because that's a little bit more intensive than this here um but it's it's doing a great job here and it looks really really nice finally city area is starting to drop 63 there Tons of cars on screen right now, which is very intensive. 60, 58, okay, it does drop from 60 from time to time. So in races, especially in city areas, it will be dropping if you see a lot of cars on screen. Sometimes it might drop into the mid 50s, like right here, for example, it can drop into the 40s, but that's the most intensive thing that you can do in Forza, getting out of a tunnel for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, overall, I think I would play like this. Ultra settings does look way better than high as well, and it still provides an amazing experience. And I value the graphical fidelity in this particular title more than 60 plus. 100% of the time. Next is Apex Legends and we're playing at 1080p using TSAA and the highest settings aside from the textures which are set to high and this one is set to very high. Looking at the entire map things are looking pretty good actually with well above like 80 FPS the entire time. Oh I hear a lot of them guys! Guys you! Alright he doesn't have a weapon I think. He does. No he does! That's another one. Okay, 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 we need to go. We need to go. Uh, a little bit of an intensive scenario here with a lot of stuff happening and smoke effects and so on. Yep, 90 FPS. Not a super high uh, refresh rate experience, but it is still very playable and it feels good on a high refresh rate panel anyways. So far, the 1660 Super hasn't been doing a bad job in the games that we have tested, right? Lots of grass is also pretty intensive. Gonna throw a smoke grenade again. Just to lower things a little bit. Yeah, lower 100s and 90s at times. Gonna throw my ultimate out right here and some smokes as well. And we're gonna see like worst case scenario now. There it is. So it can drop slightly from 60 FPS in like worst case scenario, but it's only for a split second. I think this is pretty reasonable of an experience. And again, you can drop things if you're not happy with this performance. Now we got 69 FPS in The Last of Us Part 1. Look at that, that's beautiful. <laughs> so we're playing this one at the 1080p resolution using FSR2 set to quality and the automatic settings, which is low graphic settings with medium textures, basically. And I'm not sure, I think it's not gonna stay at 60 plus FPS all of the time, unfortunately, but yeah, I would actually play with these settings, okay? Uh, FSR here at 1080p doesn't look that bad on a huge 4k monitor like i'm using right now it does look quite rough but <laughs> uh, in a smaller monitor i have tried it already and it looks really decent now look in this direction yeah things do drop from 60 fps into the higher 50s it's a single player title once again so i'm okay with a few drops here and there um, as long as the averages are above 60 fps i think it's a completely fine experience especially for a game like the last of us this is a really really demanding title as you know let's keep on going this is also pretty intensive right here yep 58 59 not terrible once again i thought it was actually going to be a little bit worse as it was terrible at release yeah 59 right there also zero stutters so far at least so that is absolutely insane, <laughs> considering the state that this game was in. Right here is gonna be the most intensive part. 
looking back at the guys here and at the stairs and it's dropping only slightly from 60 fps now in gta 5 we can see that the 1660 super is still capable of 1440p gaming as long as you only play like older titles we're playing on very high settings as you can see and the advanced settings are all turned off because these are super super intensive and that's good enough for us to achieve like around 100 frames per second on average i believe i'm still not sure what's gonna end up being but uh, yeah around here it's extremely smooth damn it it won't make your driving better by the way unfortunately <laughs> and down here it's less gpu intensive so we're actually in the 120s which is quite nice gosh damn it and sorry 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 gosh i really thought i wouldn't hit that one god this one wanted to die it doesn't doesn't count that one as well i Moving on! <laughs> Finally, Jack's Hill, really intensive area, getting down into the 80s. Alright, that's that's still really good actually. Okay, because this is a very intensive area in the map! Oh my god! What have we done? He's fine, he's still moving there, is he? No, he's not fine, guys. God damn it. Why? You know what, I think it's all Bob's fault. He probably constructed this car and uh, he's the reason why we ran over Jack. Oh my gosh. I, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm really sad right now. Down into the 70s, by the way, in super bushy areas. Uh, you're not going to come across these very often unless you are like a mountain biker or something. Hello, Bob. Goodbye, freaking bastard. Yes, you made me kill Jack. But yeah, it's gonna stay above 60 FPS the entire time, which is pretty damn good at 1440p. Now it's Red Dead Redemption 2, also from Rockstar at 1080p, using like uh, medium settings, I would say, with ultra textures. Most things are on medium here. I just disabled the motion blur from the preset, and I first tried it on balanced settings. Most things were set to high there, and it was getting like 50 FPS over here, so I thought of lowering it down a little bit so we can stay above 60 FPS the entire time. And the game still looks really really good like this and it is buttery buttery smooth so if you want to play some red dead redemption 2 which is not a new game anymore you know uh, and it's not really that intensive to run these days you can do so absolutely fine with the gtx 1660 super anyway we're headed to strawberry i can see it already at the distance this is one of the most intensive areas in the entire game mainly because of the water all right dropping into the 60s finally yeah, way more intensive than it than the like plain fields were. Even the forests were less intensive than this. Getting 60s, but it's not dropping from 60. So I think these settings are pretty adequate for the GTX 1660 Super. Starting to stutter slightly there, for some reason. We're not running out of VRAM or RAM or anything, but yeah, we're seeing a few little spikes. Anyway, near the water, it's not dropping really. I thought it was gonna drop a little bit further, but no. So, you can play Red Dead Redemption 2 absolutely fine. In Saint Denis, it will get even higher FPS. If you don't have a CPU bottleneck, there is. So, let's move on now. Now it's Stutter Night, and I already played an entire match of it, just to load the shaders and everything. We're playing at 1080p using DX12 and the high settings preset, but I turned up the resolution scale to 100%, so we're at native 1080p. Alright, let's start counting our FPS, and let me tell you, the first game was super stuttery. I really hope the next one is gonna be better, but while dropping from the sky, it was really bad, and it still is really bad. Look at this. How do people put up with this crap dude look at the performance man that frame time is terrible we're running an overkill cpu more than enough ram at 3600 megahertz which is fast ddr4 cl14 and a 1660 super that's not vram maxed out or anything and it's it's getting 14 13 1 percent lows like what the hell is this also, it's not NVIDIA Reflex. I tried enabling or disabling that option. I mean, it's just, it's Fortnite. Fortnite is completely freaking broken. <laughs> okay. Uh, sometimes it's more broken in DX12 than DX11. Other times it's more broken the other way around. This is completely terrible. I'm going to try it on DX11 just for a little bit, but 
I don't have my hopes up. Okay, while dropping this time around, it didn't seem to be as stuttery as in DirectX 12, so maybe just stick to DX11. In this season, or in this latest update, it seems to be more stable, although... It is starting to become terrible as we speak. Oh my god. I remember last time that I tried Fortnite on a Sunday video of full review like this. What the heck happened now? Okay, I can't play this game. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, it's hearing me, you know? It hates me just as much as I hate it. Let's move on to the next one. I don't care anymore. <laughs> now we're playing Resident Evil 4 Remake, the Chainsaw Demo, and we're playing at 1080p using the balanced settings, uh, which are pretty adequate, in my opinion, for a GPU like this, especially with 6 gigabytes of VRAM. As you can see, VRAM is very much under control there. It still looks pretty decent like this, and overall, it's a smooth experience. Although, once again, we see a few drops from 60 FPS uh, from time to time. Sometimes it's above it, but uh, it will drop down in more intensive scenarios. Everything all right. You'll see some little spikes here and there in the frame time. By the way, it's not going to be a completely buttery smooth experience, but it's only when it needs to load in some new things. And finally, right here, it becomes a little bit more intensive, I think, especially near the fire, right? Yeah, there we go. 54, 53. Well, I thought it was going to be a bit worse, honestly. Oh, no, 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 no. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh my god, so many of them. No, 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 no. Please, please, please. I can still control the weapons pretty well, you know, and shoot them bastards. You can see that it, it delivers a pretty okay experience, and this is a recent title as well. So, I guess that's what you can expect in recent games from 2023. Low to medium settings, 1080p, around 60 FPS average, which is decent. Now we have Battlefield 2042, which is running pretty well at 1080p medium settings. And uh, we're already losing this, but it's okay. Let's start counting our FPS. 90 FPS is pretty damn smooth, my friends, especially on a high refresh rate monitor and especially in Battlefield games. Please, medics, do something. Please heal them. Heal me. Heal me. Heal me. Oh, my God. They don't do anything. Lots of smoke effects. Nope. I don't want that either. I can see anything. All right, nice. We got one. There are more, actually. Nice. Come on, come on, come on. There's one there. Uh, reload, please. Cheeky reload right here. All right, let's go. I know that they're behind this rock. Yep, there's one. Uh, come on. No, my God, so many everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, the experience is really nice and smooth in this one. I, I thought it was going to do a little bit worse of a job, uh, considering that I also prefer to play on medium with the RTX 3060, for example, 12 gigabyte model. Um, of course, that is capable of achieving like 100 FPS plus on average, but this is not too far off, which is insane. Okay, I don't want to play this anymore. This team sucks too much. I don't like this. <laughs> anyway, it's very, very, very smooth, actually. And I wasn't expecting it to be so good. And well, this is CSGO at 1080p low settings with high textures and four times MSAA to put a bit more strain on this GPU. And you do need a lot of CPU power to achieve like 500 FPS, which is what we're getting right here. Of course, if you don't have the 5800X 3D or something similar to that, you're going to see lower FPS, but that's because of a CPU bottleneck. I mean, GPU usage is still fluctuating, even with a CPU this powerful. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. No, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Nice. There we go. There's another one here. Ah, he was fast. He was fast. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Everything is fine, 454 FPS. If you want to be competitive at CSGO, all you need is like a 1650, honestly. You don't even need the GPU like this. A 1650 will be good um, at like 1080p low settings with a fast CPU for 240 FPS, easily. Come on, come on, come on, show yourself. There we go, there we go, I need to reload now. Hi. <laughs> We're gonna get this one, nice, in the leg. Okay, another one down. Everything is all right. How did he hit me? Damn it. Damn it. No. God. God. Why? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Freaking Glock, man. <laughs> Four hits. <laughs> 
What the? What are you guys doing all of them here? Like, what are you? Why did you spawn in front of me, buddy? That was really weird. No. Ah, God, jump from behind. Goodbye, sir. Uh, can I? Can I? Oh, let's let's knife each other. Yeah. No. No. He he won. He, no. He, I, how the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I win that knife fight. <laughs> what? Oh my god. No, no, not from behind. Okay. Woo! No! Freaking spawn protections, man. Reload, reload. Let's go. Nine seconds left. Six seconds left. One more kill. Come on. Nice. One more, one more, one more. Now, okay. <laughs> Almost a thousand points. That was pretty good. <laughs> Next is Diablo 4, which is also very easy to run at 1080p using the high settings preset. It is super, super smooth at 100 plus FPS, basically. I, I think even in like boss fights and stuff, it shouldn't drop too much from 100, maybe like into the 70s or 80s minimum, dropping to 100 FPS. Uh, come on, the mana is not enough. Let's go, kill them bastards. There we go. We're gonna see some explosions in just a little bit as well. Where are the exploding bastards, mate? Usually they're here, I think. Not seeing any. Ah, oh, there they are. Okay, finally. Please explode. Nice. Well, it didn't really drop our FPS, did it? <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty stable here and very buttery smooth. Which it might be quite surprising to some people, especially for me, because I, I saw that this game utilizes a ton of VRAM, like 12 gigabytes, even at 1080p or something like that. Maybe 10 gigabytes at 1080p Ultra. Of course, we are on high settings, but I thought 6 gigs wouldn't cut it. Well, I was wrong. Now it's Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p using TAA on high, no FSR at the moment, and using the medium settings, which are recommended for the 1660 Super. And with these settings, well, things are looking quite decent, around 60 to 70 frames per second here in the Hogsmead area. However, it will definitely drop from 60 FPS once we leave this part of the game, because Hogsmead is more CPU intensive than GPU intensive. So if you don't have a CPU bottleneck, you are going to see higher FPS in this part as well as Hogwarts right here It's already dropping from 60 frames as you can see 57 there 55 56 looking at the, all of the trees It drops even further so yeah, <laughs> what we're seeing here are the limits of the GTX 1660 Ti in Hogwarts Legacy. I don't think it drops much from these values in the entire map, okay? This is why I'm testing it right here, because uh, this is where I have seen it drop the most. Now, FSR is here to save the day if you require 60 FPS all of the time. So let's set FSR 2 to quality and using this upscaling technology it delivers 90 FPS right now. Obviously we're not inside of the forest yet so it's not intensive yet but it's definitely gonna stay above 60 100% of the time and on top of that, it actually looks pretty good using FSR or DLSS in this game. Because at native 1080p resolution, things look really soft. You know, it's not that the upscaling technologies are fantastic in this game, it's just that the game at native resolution is bad looking, honestly. All right, so it adds a little bit more sharpness here. We see that it doesn't drop from 60 FPS anymore which is quite awesome, and you can have those locked 60 if you want to. The thing is capable of running recent titles still, even with 6 gigabytes of VRAM. You just need to keep your expectations in check and not go for like ultra settings. But that doesn't mean that every single recent title won't run at ultra settings. We're playing Far Cry 6 now, actually I'm gonna run the benchmark run at 1080p using ultra settings. Okay, as you can see, these are turned off because it doesn't support RT in this particular title. And let's run the built-in benchmark. And as you can see, this is actually pretty amazing coming from a 1660 Super. Again, I thought I'd need to utilize high settings to see 60 plus FPS all of the time, and maybe it will drop into the 50s from time to time in extremely intensive scenarios, but this is the benchmark run and it won't drop from 60 at all. 
That's really nice. And again, this is ultra settings with ultra textures, not HD textures. VRAM is completely under control. I, I mean, Ubisoft is actually making optimized titles these days. Well, not really these days, but yeah, this is the latest Far Cry 6 and it doesn't consume a ton of VRAM. It's nice. It's very smooth and playable. And it is conclusion time, my friends. I'll still have Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Rainbow Six Siege running right here while we talk about the little GTX 1660 Super. Now, should you buy a GTX 1660 Super in 2023? That's the question, right? And I think... Yes and no at the same time. If you want to play the latest and greatest titles at like high settings or above with no VRAM limitations and so on, no, this is definitely not for you, of course. We've seen that the latest and greatest games, well, latest not greatest because the older titles are always better, you know? Like, for some reason, games suck today. <laughs> but if you want a quality experience in those and a future-proof GPU, you could say, well, this is not it. It's running on its last legs in those titles. You saw that we've had to play a lot of games, uh, like The Last of Us Part 1, for example, at 1080p medium or low settings to achieve roughly 60 FPS or like 50 to 60. And it's like borderline minimum, I would say, for a decent experience. But the thing is, this is not a $200 GPU anymore. And if you can grab it for 80 bucks like I did, I think it's a really nice deal, guys. You can play pretty much every title comfortably from like 2022 and older, especially at 1080p resolution. And it's to be expected a little bit because back when the 1660 Ti released, I made a full review on it and I played the games at 1440p, at least most of them, and it did quite a decent job at that res. Now, of course, four years later, it's not good for 1440p at all. <laughs> Forget about that resolution, you need more VRAM and horsepower to do that, but at 1080p, it still packs a little bit of a punch. And that's been it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.